Hello. Now, after completing the integration of various sensors with Ar Arduino, and we have completed integration of basic actuators like lights, LEDs, and the external LEDs, inbuilt LEDs. So, we will now in this lecture, we will now move on to integration of uh, a motor based actuator. So, over here, I have got a small servo motor. So, this one particularly is used for controlling the wings and tail rudders of remote control planes or RC planes. See, so this is just a there is a geared mechanism inside. I do not know whether it is visible or not. So, there is a motor and you when you send pulses of various widths, the motor rotates to just that bit. So, there are various gears inside. Okay. So, in this lecture we will learn how to integrate this motor and make it perform according to our requirements. So, here we are going to cover the following topics introduction to actuators, uh, servo motors and interfacing of the servo motor with Arduino. So, we will first deal with hardware interface and then the actual sketch we are going to which we are going to upload on the hardware. So, actuators are basically mechanical or electromechanical devices, they convert energy or signals into motion. They are mainly used to provide control motion to other components of various mechanical structures or devices. So, the basic working principle is uh, in the servo motor, you have various mechanical structures like gears and screws and ball bearings, which are interfaced with a small motor over here and this produces very controlled motion, but is able to uh, perform much more uh, efficiently than this motor alone would have been able to. So, like generally for servos the torque requirements are high as compared to normal DC motors. So, this is what is uh, known as a micro servo in the market. So, while purchasing you look for micro servo motors, there are servo motors of various ranges and sizes. So, this one is this can be directly integrated with your Arduino board without much uh, interfacing or external circuitry. So, we have various types of motor based actuators, actually uh, servo motor is just one of them. You have servo motors, stepper motors, hydraulic motors, solenoids, relays, AC motors. Uh, one point to note here is solenoids and relays are not actually motor based actuators, but sometimes solenoids may be used to drive motors and relays may be used to integrate various multiple motors with any kind of programmable circuit. So, relay is something like a electromechanical switch, whereas solenoid works on the principle of uh, magnetism. Uh, whenever you pass there is a coil, there is a coil surrounding an iron core and whenever you pass current through the coil, the whole setup magnetizes and it, you can use it as a magnet. So, various uses of solenoids are solenoid walls uh, for controlling water in pipes, um, electronic locks and so on. So, we will focus only on the servo motor part. So, it is a high precision motor and it is able to provide a rotary motion between 0 and 180 degrees and as you have seen it has got three wires one black, one red and one yellow. So, many a times you may have uh, you may see that the black wire may be replaced with brown ones also. So, the motor I have got does not have a black wire, but it has got a brown wire, but nothing to worry about this darkest wire is actually kept for ground. Then red one is for the power supply, I am actually going to provide 5 volt power supply from the Arduino board and the yellow one is the signal pin, which is going to provide 
the signal for control motion to the motor, not from the motor to the device. It is going to provide signals from the board to the motor. So, yet again we have to install a special library. So, following the process we followed during the DHT library installation, you just have to uh, update your library if not already updated to include the servo library. And within the sketch you have to create a instance called servo, servo my servo for enabling this use of this particular servo. So, before moving any further, let us just take a look at the library. We will just search for servo over here in the library manager. As you can see, there are many options for servos, but I have just chosen the Adafruit PWM servo driver library. So, it is already installed. So, nothing else to worry about and one more thing when you install a new library you can see whatever examples you had packaged with the normal ID when you fresh downloaded it. So, whatever libraries you install you get some sample demo programs. So, for this Adafruit PWM servo driver library we have something called a PWM test and we have something called servo. So, you click on it a new sketch will appear. So, this is uh, what we call a company provided sketch just to check whether your code is working whether your hardware is working fine or not whether there is any problem with your board or whether there is any problem with your motor or other such things. So, it is a pretty big code we actually will be uh, doing something very simple not this complicated. So, we will take a look at the code. Now, again we include the servo dot h library function library file. So, once this has been included here we are choosing a servo pin as the pin number 12 on the at mega board then instance of a we create an instance of the servo as servo demo. Then within the setup we write servo demo dot attach these are some of the functions associated with servo demo. So, within attach it would expect the pin number to which the servo is being attached the pin number of the processor board you are using or the Arduino board you are using. So, once this setup is done we move on to the looping function. So, you have servo demo the instance of the servo servo demo dot write if you write 0 it will move 0 degrees it, it, it will reposition itself to 0 degrees then we put a delay for 1000 milliseconds or 1 second then we again write a uh, value as 90 to move the servo 90 degrees again a delay of 1 second again after this we try to move the servo to 180 degrees. So, uh, if you recall in the previous slides I have said the servo the servo is able to move between 0 and 180 degree. So, this is the code outline. So, we have already covered these, but we will go through it create an instance of the servo the instance should be attached to the pin before it can be used in the code then uh, that means within setup you write that servo instance dot attach and the pin number if you just call that servo instance dot write it will not function you have to actually attach the servo with the coding part then the write function takes the degree values and rotates the motor accordingly the connection is pretty simple connect the ground of the servo that is the dark wire to the ground on the Arduino board. We connect the power supply wire that is generally the red wire 
to the 5 volt pin on the board and the signal wire to any one of the pins. Uh, we may use pin 8 or pin 12 or any kind of digital input output pins. Now, prior to using the board, we connect the board to the PC, we set the port number and the board type, we verify and then upload the code. So, the code we just discussed few slides back, it will give you an output of first it will turn 0 degree, it will align itself to 0 degree, then it will wait for 1 second, then it will go to 90 degrees then wait for one second and finally, it will go to 180 degrees and this thing will keep on looping over and over again. So, we will see a few variations of this code. So, there are a lot more functions with the servo library, you have we have a knob function, we have a sweep function, write, write microseconds, read, attach, detach and so on. So, now focusing back to the IDE. So, the code we discussed just now is already open. So, we have set the servo pin as pin 8 or maybe any one of the pins we can set. Let us say we set it to pin 12 or pin 10, right. Now, before we do anything, we will connect the servo. So, we connect the ground wire, brown or black wire to the ground pin on the board. then we connect the VCC to the power supply pin on the board and finally, we will use a wire of another color, yes. So, finally, we attach the signal, the yellow wire. So, we are about to set it to pin 10. So, we will attach it to pin number 10. So, that is it. So, this is the connection of the servo. We attach the board to the PC. Now, we check our processor is at mega 2560, uh, always verify, uh, we have various uh, variations of at mega boards. As you can see on the board over here, this is Arduino mega 2560. If we zoom in on this region, this is at mega 2560. It is always better to be careful. So, you see there are two variations at mega 2560 and at mega 1280. So, we have selected 2560, the port has been selected. We verify our code. So, there seems to be no error in the code. Now, we upload our code. Now, if you focus on the motor, I will reset it. It will first align itself to 0, then 90, then 180. Now, we can try different variations of this code, just take out the output, the signal pin. 
So, suppose in the ID instead of 0, 90 and 180, we give 45, 45 and 45. So, let us see what it does. So, it does not seem to be doing anything. So, we will try a different variation. We give it 0, we give it 90, we give it 90. So, it seems we have hit upon some error. As you can see, it shows a we are do timeout that is the compiler timeout. So, we will again check what is wrong with it. Let us revert back to the original code. ports are set, board is set. Okay, there is something wrong with this, this thing is permanently yellow, we will do one thing, we will restart the code. we again compile the code and upload the code. So, there are various other functions we can try with the servo, you have a knob, sweep, write. So, it is actually uh, up to the user how you can manipulate these functions or these libraries to build a new application. So, I hope you enjoy building uh, IoT services with your Arduino boards, just integrate simple sensors and integrate them in various innovative ways. Thank you.